measures to make sure that these viruses do not get into the country. But what exactly are we dealing with and what is the Marburg virus? Well, we've heard a lot about Ebola, but what is the Marburg virus? Let's take a look at this right now. Now, this is a hemorrhagic fever, very similar to Ebola, which does present a severe bleeding, organ failure, and in most cases, death. It is caused by an animal-borne virus, and it was first recognized, actually, in 1966 when a group of European scientists imported some African green monkeys from Uganda and actually contracted the illness. Now, we do see that uh, the reservoir host of the Marburg virus is actually the African fruit bat, which would explain why these cases presented exclusively in Africa. These cases have been seen in Uganda, Zimbabwe, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Kenya, Angola, and South Africa so far in the history. Now, if we go forward, we'll see that infected people typically are not contagious until they present some symptoms. Now, these symptoms tend to appear after about five to ten days. And these include fever, chills, headache, muscle pains. Now, this is one of the reasons that diagnosing the Marburg uh, virus is actually difficult because the symptoms are very similar to other fevers like malaria and the typhoid fever. And it does get worse after a few days. You find that... Um, uh, people will have a raised rash, they will experience some vomiting, chest pain, sore throat, and after that, delirium, shock, organ failure, massive hemorrhaging, a lot of bleeding, and multi-organ dysfunction, which often leads to death. So it is a very, very serious disease. Let's look at the difference and the similarity between Ebola and the Marburg fever. Now, it is very, very similar to Ebola in many ways. Both of them do originate from Africa. And both of them were discovered in the mid-20th century. Also, they both live in one or more animal hosts. So this is one of the ways that you can actually contract Ebola. Scientists are not actually sure exactly how it's transmitted uh, from animals to humans, but they do know that it originates from the animals. And the, both diseases do cause virtually the same symptoms. So it would be very difficult to know if someone has Ebola or the Marburg virus. And here's the scary part. There's no effective treatment or vaccine available at the moment. There have been some trials, but nothing concrete, which means all doctors can do is keep patients hydrated and give them some drugs that will help their blood clot. Let's look at the ways in which the Marburg fever is different from Ebola. There's very little difference, actually except perhaps for the incubation period. Ebola takes a slightly longer time. The maximum for Marburg in recent cases has been about 14 days, but Ebola can take up to 21 days before a patient shows symptoms. The mortality rate, however, is a key difference. Ebola is a lot more deadly than the Marburg virus. You find that the mortality rate for Ebola is up to 90%. For the Marburg virus, it varies quite... Uh, quite largely, between 23 to 90 percent. So there are more survivors of the Marburg virus than of the Ebola virus. The Marburg virus does seem less deadly. No one really knows why some people survive and others don't, but recovery is very slow. It can take months for you to regain your weight and your strength, and the virus does remain in the body for several weeks, even after you continue to heal. Let's look at the history of Ebola in Kenya. There have actually been a total of three cases. In 1980, two were infected. One of them died, and this was the patient who died. A doctor who was attending to this patient did attract, um, sorry, was actually affected by the virus, but he did not die. In 1987, another ins instance of the Marburg virus, one person was affected, that same person died. This was actually a 15-year-old Danish boy who died in the 11th day of illness. Now, the interesting thing about both these deaths is that both of these patients had been visiting Kitum Cave at Mount Elgin National Park. So that is very interesting. And, of course, the theory is presented that some of those bat caves are where these patients were exposed to the virus. Now, the closest since the 1980s has been the cases in Uganda, and there have been quite a few of those between 2007 and 2000 and, um, 2014, rather. 22 people have died of the Marburg virus. The September 
uh, last month's uh, case was actually the most recent and that patient did die but since then Uganda has said it is Marburg virus free since no new cases have been presented in two weeks. So that's in a nutshell what the Marburg virus is. Less deadly than Ebola but very 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 similar. But then again no cure so it's a bit of good news bad news at the same time isn't yes, it? Yes it is. I can only hope that um, something will be done.